Hello friends, today this video is dedicated to scapegoats. I wanna talk about five truth pills that need to be swallowed. It's not easy, it's not fun, and it's definitely not fair. But if you don't swallow these truth pills, you can wind up staying stuck as a lifelong victim and nobody wants that. Okay, so with that in mind, let's get started. For those that don't know me, my name is Michelle. I'm a life and relationship coach. I'm also the founder of the Thriver School of Transformation, which is a monthly membership where we meet live weekly and we work through the side effects of narcissistic abuse together. So if you're interested in that, make sure you check out the links in the description box below. Okay, so when it comes to the scapegoat, uh, it's important to understand that anyone that's really high on the scale of NPD is always going to assign a role to each member of the family. So for example, sometimes if it's just a husband and a wife, the wife will take turns being the scapegoat and the golden child. Sometimes you're amazing, sometimes you're horrible, but you are never anything in between. Everything is always polarized, right? However, oftentimes when it's just a couple, the narcissist will be the golden child and you will be the scapegoat. Okay, so eventually you go from amazing to horrible to always being in that horrible position, and they are always in that amazing position. And this can make somebody feel unlovable. This can make somebody, especially if you have a shame wound, you start thinking that, you know, there's something wrong with you, and you start trying harder and harder to please this person without realizing that you're trying to please them at the expense of yourself. You being put in that scapegoat role, if you're the spouse and there are no children, it's not because you're not lovable. It's not because you're not enough just the way you are. It's because in the narcissist's broken prism in their mind, everything is split. Everything, we, we tend to think that borderlines are the ones that split, right? Everything is all or nothing. Well, narcissists have that all or nothing thinking as well. You are either all amazing or you are all horrible. And that's how they see themselves. And so what they do is the pieces of themselves that they don't like, and they see as all horrible, they put into whoever they chose to be the scapegoat. This allows them to continue with their life without ever seeing those pieces of themselves that they don't like. When they see it in themselves, they provoke it in you and they blame you and as if it's your fault that that's what they do. Okay. So that happens with couples. I wanted to stress that because sometimes we think of scapegoat as only being a child in those dynamics, but a spouse without children can also be um, the scapegoat. Okay. When children come along, especially if there's more than one, actually, let's just start off with if there's one child, one child, the narcissist will choose maybe the child now becomes the golden child and you are the scapegoat. Okay. Then another child may come along. Sometimes the, the narcissist will keep the, the original golden child, the firstborn, as this, the golden child. Sometimes they'll flip. The truth pill that needs to be swallowed is that none of that is in your control. None of that is your doing, and there's nothing you can do about it, okay? So in other words, what I'm trying to say is I know that there are some scapegoats that chase, chase that parent's approval, chase that spouse's approval, chasing, running so hard and fast that it's creating extreme adrenal exhaustion in you. And yet, no matter how hard you try, you never get there. You never will, not because it's lack in you, but it's because the narcissist needs someone to have that role. It's, it's not optional. In their mind, in order for them to see themselves how they want to see themselves, they need somebody in that scapegoat role. Okay, so the truth pill is not, it wasn't your fault and there's nothing you can do about it, no matter how hard you try. I've seen some people try to be more like the narcissist. Sometimes that's a, a child coping skill. I'm going to be more like the parent that's rejecting me in hopes that the more that parent sees me like them, maybe they will accept me. But the reality is that that actually deters them more because the more you're like them, the more they're seeing them and they don't like that. They don't want to see their truth, okay? 
So recognizing that if you were put in that role, it wasn't because of anything wrong with you, but because of the broken prism of the narcissist mind. And it's hard to, to kind of swallow that uh, there's nothing you can do to leave that role. Okay. But that's, there's other information on how to get over that. Even if the narcissist sees you that way, I just don't have the time to do it in this video. The second truth pill to swallow is that you will be blamed for everything that goes wrong in the family. Okay. If there is um, problems in the family, it will always be your fault. Okay. No matter how hard you try to prove it, even if you have all the facts in front of you and it is so clear to you that, you know, it, this has nothing to do with you. The sad reality is that they need to blame somebody because not because it's your fault, but because they refuse to self-reflect. They need somebody to be at fault because somebody is at fault, right? I mean, problems between people don't happen out of nothing. So someone's doing something that's creating problems and they want it all to be you. It's your fault. It's not the fact that they scream, yell, and insult you. No, it's the fact that you get upset about it. It's not the fact that um, they get angry every time you um, put down a boundary or you do things your way. No, it's the fact that you'd never listen. You don't sacrifice yourself for them, but they twist and turn it in a way that really makes you look like the problem and they know how to do that. Okay. So trying to prove yourself, trying to prove that you are not to blame is going to cost you a whole lot of energy and it's never going to get through. The reason is, is because they are expert manipulators and you're not. So they know how to spin it in a way that makes it impossible for people to really see the truth. The third truth pill to swallow is the reality that as you have been chasing their approval and love, they have been smearing your name to everyone, right? It's so sad to realize how a narcissist smears even way before you realize they're a narcissist, even way before you realize you're in an emotionally abusive relationship, they have already begun the smear campaign. Like it doesn't make sense because normally, let's say it's just a couple. Normally you want people to look positively at your, your spouse or your significant other. Like that's a compliment to you when people look positively at your significant other. But to a narcissist, when others view you in a positive light in their brain, they think that makes them less than, which isn't normal, right? It doesn't make sense. Like everyone, we're all on the same level. <laughs> Okay. But they always need to be higher up. And so when people like you, that's an attack on them. So they have always been smearing your name. And some of the smears, I mean, I work with people that most of the people I work with are out of the relationship and they're looking back. And when they realize how far back that smear campaign goes, it's almost shocking. That's the truth pill that that you have to realize is that the smear campaign started way before you even recognized you were in an abusive relationship. And even before you contemplated separating or ending this friendship or changing jobs or whatever, depending on the relationship um, that you're in with the narcissist started way before that. I knew one person who told me that her, her mother um, told her siblings all these crazy things that she supposedly had done with the mom's spouse. None of it was true, but her siblings were told that for years before they finally told her. Now, of course, she always wondered, like, why, do, why aren't my, my siblings close to me? Like, what, what did I ever do? I'm always trying to be there for them. When she found out the things that were being said behind her back, it was heartbreaking. Okay. So the truth pill is your narcissistic family member, whoever it is, has been smearing your name and making you look bad for so long. And the reason they do this is because you, the, the, the 
the, the smear, the scapegoat, unlike the golden child, okay, the scapegoat sees the abuse. The scapegoat sees the abusive behavior, recognizes that something's wrong, whereas the golden child, because the treatment is different, doesn't see it. And so because you see it, they need to put some kind of division there. They need to make sure no one ever believes you. So that's why they smear your name. So that when the time comes that you just can't take it anymore, people won't believe you because they have done enough damage when it comes to your character that their false reality is what will be supported. Number four, uh, very linked to number three, because of the smearing, they will triangulate you with people you care about. So if it was your siblings, you will be triangulated in such a way, you think of a triangle, right? The narcissist is at the top and you and your siblings will be at opposite opposing corners. And the narcissist will fan animosity, anger, and distrust between the siblings because that will be how they will control the narrative as to what is happening in the family. And it's really sad. So the truth pill that you have to swallow is that your siblings will often be fooled by that. And there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do to try to get through. You know, that, that's the, the hard part because most people that I work with that have been um, or are uh, the scapegoat, they're really good people and they love family and they have deep, strong values when it comes to family. And the thought of letting go of trying is very hard for them. The problem is, is that the more you try, the worse it gets. And so sometimes that truth pill is that letting go is better for you in the long run than holding on to something that is trying to get away. The fifth truth pill to swallow is the reality of how many times you have been set up to look like the problem. Okay. And what I mean by that, I was working with one um, woman recently who would explain how, what would happen right before a family event, right? Uh, right before a big family gathering, she had a really big family. Um, that parent would be so awful to her, so incredibly awful. By the time they got to the family event, she was not only shaking, you know, just emotionally felt like she had gone through like a emotional tsunami, but she was upset at the, the mom. And then the mom there would be so sweet to her and so kind, touch her arm. And she's so loving to her. What was the victim's reaction? That's how my seven month old puppy plays. Anyway, um, so what would be her reaction? She'd be like, with this thought of like, or this expression, like, don't touch me. What do you think the family members were thinking? Wow, the mom is so sweet and so kind. And she's got such an attitude. She's so rude. She's so disrespectful. And sadly, sadly, that's exactly what the narcissistic mother was hoping people would think. Because then she's the victim. Everyone looks at her like she's the good guy and poor her and you are horrible. And it continues to support that warped prism of reality. Okay. I wanted to make known these truth pills because if you don't swallow them, in other words, if you keep staying in that hamster wheel of trying to harder and harder to please this person, if you try to prove yourself, if you try to chase and make the truth known and, and let everyone know, and you're trying to reach out to people that are being told things that, that don't make sense, then you are going to wind up prolonging your suffering. Something that was really helpful for me on my journey to heal was the book, The Power of Now. When I read that book, um, something that was so profound was acknowledging and acknowledging that in the moment, in the present moment, when we let go of what we can't change, there's peace. 
Now, when I first read it, it wasn't like, oh, I learned it and I just let go and everything was peaceful and awesome right from the start. No, it took a little while before that knowledge became wisdom. Wisdom is the application of knowledge. So it took me a little while to understand exactly what that meant and what it meant to let go. Letting go doesn't mean you don't love the person. Letting go doesn't mean that you don't care. Letting go doesn't mean it doesn't matter. Letting go means that you acknowledge what is out of your power and you stop resisting what is out of your power. And when you do that, there's real peace. You don't have to fake peace. You don't have to pretend. That's the great part. Some people try to pretend it doesn't bother them and it never works. The best thing to do is to get to that place where it doesn't emotionally dysregulate you and it doesn't um, continue to harm you. So part of that is also mourning as well. You have to go through a, a bit of a grief period where you mourn what you lost. You have to acknowledge it that way you don't stifle those emotions, you process and release them, and then you stop resisting the past. And what happens is these people that you're chasing that are running from you, you let go and you begin creating a beautiful life with people that want to be in your life. You start attracting, the healthier and stronger you get, you start attracting healthier people. And you can have that happy life with those happy relationships. It may not be with your family of origin, and that's sad, and I get that. And that's that mourning period that you have to go through. But that doesn't mean that you have to feel lonely, rejected, and isolated. You can create an absolutely beautiful life.